You know, if you stop and look up, Perth has some truly amazing buildings. We'll next up on Undercurrent Time to hear from the gentleman from the CEC. So we're talking about the 2014 federal budget and what's expected to be in it and, and um, the fact that the cuts that hockey is probably going to announce, which he will present as absolutely necessary to balance the budget, we are arguing are not necessary. They're a choice because they're a choice that they've taken to do the bidding of bankers and put, put the, the demands of bankers above the welfare of people. So, mm -hmm. Craig, the clearest example of how this is a choice and not a necessity is from Australia's own history, and it's from 1932, when we had a Labor government, and they had the question for them of, do they balance the budget? Now, what set this up was, this was the Depression, 1932, and the Depression, you know, the stock market crash, per se, was not the cause of the, the, the Great Depression, that was a, a trigger. The Depression was caused, especially here in Australia, when the Bank of England reimposed the gold standard, and they drew all this money out of Australia, and and collapsed the money supply by a third. Because I want to preface my comments by saying there's a presentation on our website that I did in detail about this to really give people a sense of the mindset, this bloody killing mindset that the Conservatives had back then. And people have to realise that when you see that mindset and you compare it to what we got today, it's the same thing. Yep. There's no rationality. This is an ideologically driven uh, program which will kill people opposed to policy. Now, Ted Theodore is an interesting guy. He was very familiar as a Premier of Queensland for many years. He'd seen state-owned industries developed by the state government in Queensland, you know, abattoirs, mining companies and so forth, and a prosperity that came yep. from that sort of regulation. So when he became Treasurer for the second time in uh, January of 1931, uh, you know, he saw the economy in disarray. He uh, tried and tried to get Sir Robert Gibson the chairman of the Commonwealth Bank, to issue money, issue credit into the economy because the problem back then was that consumption was falling. In other yeah. words, there wasn't enough money for people to buy the goods that were being produced by the factories and, and by, by the, uh, the, the manufacturers here in Australia. So consequently, that led to a bad cycle. There wasn't enough people to buy the goods. They, people couldn't sell the goods. Therefore, they had to lay off workers because they couldn't produce enough. Uh, they, they were overproduction and so on and so forth. So what Ted Theodore said is we have to increase consumption and he proposed the issuance of a 17 billion pound what's called fiduciary, fiduciary note, note issue. Yeah. Now fiduciary notes are basically were notes, currency notes issued without the backing of gold mm. because up until that point uh, all notes were backed by gold. You could take that note into the bank and get the equivalent in gold. So the Royal Commission looked into this question and here listen to these, these two quotes from what they found. Um, point 503 in the Royal Commission's report that ha was handed down in 1937, quote, the central bank in the Australian system is the Commonwealth Bank of Australia. This bank is a public institution engaged in the discharge of a public trust. Within the limits prescribed by law, it has the power to print and issue notes as legal tender money, and every obligation undertaken by the Commonwealth Bank is backed by this power of creating the money with which to discharge it. Point 504, because of this power, the Commonwealth Bank can increase the cash reserves of the trading banks. For example, it can buy securities or other property. It can lend to the governments or to others in a variety of ways. And it can even make money available to governments or to others free of any charge. So the <laughs> Commission admitted that the bank could have done what Theodore asked it to do. Now, that was handed down in 1937. There was a Conservative government in place until World War II. But when Labor took over in World War II, Craig, Ben Chifley was the treasurer then, who'd been on this Royal Commission. What happened then? Well, basically, Australia was abandoned by Britain. as We talked about that last week. Malcolm Fraser had various comments about that last week. And therefore, we had to look after ourselves. And the bankers obviously thought, oh, heck, we're in trouble here. That's, that's, we've got to do what's got to be done. So in 1978, the expenditure of the government was 78 million pounds. Sorry, in 1929, yep. right? It was 78 million pounds. Now it stagnated for over 10 years up until about 1939, where it was uh, 88 million pounds. And you can see this on this graphic that we've got on the screen now. And the point is that then the actual power of the creation of credit kicked in through the Commonwealth Bank and through other measures, whereby they were issuing, in the height of World War II, 677 million pounds or, you know, yeah. that was the expenditure of the government at that particular point. 
so it showed a massive increase of expenditure. But it was all on the back of that green line, which is the money, direct money issued by the Commonwealth Bank. Yeah, and the point is this could have been done through the Depression. Yep. This point was clear. It was simply a political policy of austerity, which is exactly what we've got today, that would say you can't do this. And, it, and in today's today. terms, what do we do? You have large-scale infrastructure development projects funded by central credits, just like through Commonwealth Bank we've proposed, and get away from funding speculation. Yep. The problem is we don't have a consumption problem so much because we have a problem of where the money is actually expended to in this economy. Well, as you can see, the winter is beginning to set in. And one thing we should really think about in the winter is our homeless people. It's very cold out here on the streets. Well, next up, Alicia Pereira took a look at a church program helping to feed our homeless. Victory Life Centre Church runs a food program on a massive scale from its warehouses here in Osborne Park and in Quinana. Now, under the title of Margaret Cork Community Outreach, it has programs to expand even further in the future. We spoke to some of its workers to see how it operates. Uh, well, Margaret Cork Community Outreach now, we've been going for about 15 years and uh, we've grown tremendously. We started out with just two normal fridges. Today we've got big cool rooms. Uh, we're putting out 21 tonne of food a week. We also got an outreach in Quinana where we put out seven tonnes of food there and that's very much family and we're really just building that because we've been going there for probably I think about three years now. One of the biggest aspects that we've got is because we don't get any government funding, uh, we're not actually topographically restricted. Uh, we're able to actually service anybody that's in need and uh, this means that they can come from anywhere within the Perth metropolitan area and they can come to us for assistance. Therefore, we're a lot more accessible. You don't need to make an appointment. You don't need to qualify. You just need to actually have the basic financial aspects that relate to, I'm a person in need. I'm suffering some form of financial hardship. Can you help me? And the answer is yes. And that's what's made us so successful. The willingness to supply whatever is needed to anybody at any time. Uh, Centrelink send 80% of their uh, people to us and we, we try to help the people as well as just fooding, feeding them. And uh, so uh, we've just found, we get fresh produce and all sorts just given to us and, and we see people's lives changing through it. The other big advantage we've got is that we don't, we don't actually charge any handling fee or any service fee or anything. Everything that we actually give away is given away free of charge. A lot of the country areas are now, Bunbury are wanting to come on board, Bustleton's wanting to come on, uh, because there's so many more needs now. And I think where we saw before it was really probably the street people, because we also have a King's Cafe. We feed over 200 people on a Tuesday night and they come in. But now we're, we're finding it's different type of people and family uh, that are having, having greater needs and I think some people are thinking well do I pay the mortgage or do I eat? Because of financial restraints uh, we rely very very heavily on our volunteers. We have approximately 45 volunteers between the two centres here in Quinana. We only have four part-time staff here, the rest are all volunteers. So again it's another way of reducing the running costs uh, of doing that uh, is by having these volunteers here and, and they love it. They love the environment and they like the fact that they're actually helping people. I've been here nearly six years and I absolutely love it. I come on a Thursday, um, lovely people to work with um, and I love helping to the people who are struggling or need help, food and that. It's, it's a great place to work, it, it's a very good, you know, the rest of the crew are, are great people to work with and it's, a very good, it's for a very good cause I think and it's, um, it's definitely needed. I think we're handling about uh, 6,000 clients at the moment, which, which is a lot. Uh, uh, it's got nothing really to do with the church side of it now, people bless it but uh, I just think it's, it's getting larger, there's more needs and I'd like to be able to think we can meet those needs. Community Outreach wants to actually grow and expand not only within Western Australia but uh, into every, every state of Australia and then we want to look at overseas as well.
Agricole Community Outreach is open distributing food to those in need four days a week, Tuesday to Friday, 10 to 3. This has been Alicia Pereira reporting for Undercurrent. Well recently we've been lucky enough to take Undercurrent a little further afield out into some more regional areas and this week we caught up in Geraldton with the Youth and Family Services. I'm Jenny Allen, I'm the Director of the Geraldton Regional Community Education Centre. We're an organisation that's operated in the Midwest Gascoigne and Murchison region for over 40 years. We have a strong focus on supporting communities. We like to help them to identify their strengths and their capacity and where they would like some support, particularly with a focus on children and young people. My name's Jackie Taylor and I'm the Aboriginal Project Officer for the Geraldton Regional Community Education Centre. Uh, one of the programs that I coordinate is the Parents in Tune with Education project, um, or we call it PIPE for short. And PIPE aims to increase parents' awareness and understanding of what their role is in supporting their children from birth um, throughout their education. Um, we uh, deliver workshops to parents. There's stuff in in the project that um, parents would never have known, um, in particular around early brain development and what each part of the brain represents and how each part develops and um, also showing them you know, what they already do with their children. It's reinforcing you know, all those important things that they do. I'm Emma, a partnership broker at the Geraldton Regional Community Education Centre. We have run a couple of programs. One includes the Future Leaders Mentoring in School program, the Career Mentoring program, which we run with high school students year 10s throughout Geraldton, and we work on their career pathway plan. So we find out the career that they're interested in working in when they leave school, and then we match them with a mentor who is experienced in or currently working in the field that they want to go into. We match them together for one term, and they find out from their mentor what the job is really like how they can get into it, how their mentor got into it and what else they can do to help help that journey. Last year we worked with about 25 students from Geraldton Senior and Nagel Catholic College and they all loved the program. Um, one student got some work experience out of it, one student got a work placement, so going to the um, workplace one day a week from school and another student has got a apprenticeship which is fantastic. We developed a pipe kit and we've been delivering um, pipe kit training to service providers such as uh, you know, our educators, health workers and key community people to um, you know, deliver information in an easy to understand way to the clients or the people in their community. A lot of people, um, I guess, are unaware of how important it is um, to give our children the best start in life and one of the main reasons why a lot of our Aboriginal children are falling behind in school is um, because the lack of support that they get whether it's at home or the lack of services in, in your smaller remote communities. We need to get the word out to parents that it starts at home. Um, you need to give your children as much support as you can before they enter school because um, is it really them falling behind at school or, or were they already behind at schools? And it's been running since 2009. Um, we've delivered training to a number of organisations. Um, we've delivered in, um, in, you know, at conferences in, um, you know, in Perth, um, in Sydney, Melbourne, Canberra. So it has been very successful. Well, that brings us to the end of tonight's episode as we finish just near one of my most favourite buildings here in the city of Perth. Can't wait to see you again next week for more of the show that we make just for you, Undercurrent.